I'm all about technology. When I crank up my Walkman with the latest Mr. Mr. cassette, I cannot help but marvel about how far we've come since the days of the component stereo systems with their gigantic speakers and delicate turntables for our LPs. When CDs first came out, I was fascinated when my friend Dewey put on Donald Fagan's The Nightfly and the crisp, clear sound came out of his gigantic speakers with no click or static from a turntable needle. Just silence. Then, music. For a while, we replaced typewriters with word processors, and now simply send messages, watch movies, and transmit videos on teeny tiny little screens on our telephones. It's fascinating. I forget what it's like to lick a postage stamp. I never thought I'd actually miss it, or the scratchy sound at the beginning of the record before the music started, but I kind of do. I tried licking one of the self-adhesive stamps, and it just wasn't the same. One beef I do have with all the new technology is the fact that our children are now completely reliant on their cell phones. My daughter's is fused to her hand. When I was young, we simply took over the family telephone for hour blocks of time, talking to whatever girlfriend or amigo we didn't get to talk to enough over the course of the day. Time spent walking home from school was spent walking home from school. Now they text and chat all the live long day. I've gone into my daughter's room to say goodnight, only to find her fast asleep apparently worn out from the texting and chatting, certainly not from the exertion of cleaning her room, with the blue light still glowing brightly from her numb, tapped-out fingertips. These all-purpose smartphones with their MP3 players and video capabilities and GPS and laser death ray nuclear fission packs are wonderful, compared to our means of communication 20, even 10 years ago. But for Christ's sake, at some point, enough is enough. I was fortunate enough to have a daughter in a dance program at her high school good times. I went to the event and settled into my seat a few minutes early. I'm never late. It's a curse. The auditorium was oddly quiet compared to when I was a kid and everyone was running around at silent movie speed, schmoozing in the squirrely, awkward, gangly manner in which the adolescents do their business. I realized that it was because 75% of them were texting each other. Heads were down as if in prayer. It was spooky. There was a pre-show warning about turning off all cell phones and video devices and the house lights went down and the show began. And I was awash in a sea of blue as the texting went on throughout the program. Little glowing blue islands in the darkness, kids clacking away at their teeny little keyboards, no one paying any attention to the show. I stuck around until my daughter had completed her numbers, which were torturously spread out over an hour, in which I thought I was gonna throw up or have a seizure as little blue lights floated in the space around me. Afterward, I bolted to the nearest saloon and hurriedly drank a huge draft beer and a shot of whiskey, the good stuff, just to calm my jangled nerves. I inquired about Dramamine, but there was none to be had, so I settled for another whiskey. So, my personal maladies aside, I believe there should be some kind of limits on these contraptions. Here's my idea. Let's invent some kind of jamming device that will effectively render all cell phone and light devices inactive and useless within assigned parameters. I want these devices installed in restaurants, movie theaters, and grocery stores. Sorry folks, if you want to find out if you need to pick up more shredded wheat or Massengill, please call from outside, not in line, at the cash register. I want this to be entered into federal, state, and global law, and those trying to outfox the jamming devices to be immediately escorted from the premises, shot, and eviscerated in the parking lot with their carcasses left as a gory no-nonsense reminder to others. When I am king, all motor vehicles will be equipped with the device as well. Turn the engine on, and the cell phone goes stone fucking dead. Those who succeed in overriding the devices will be tracked down by some super secret, high-tech, space-age satellite gizmo. And their automobiles will be set afire by big, fast, scary, powerful, dark, tank-like vehicles equipped with napalm-spewing flamethrowers. No quarter will be given. And once again, the burned out hulls of the offending vehicles will be left smoldering along the roadside as a grisly reminder to others who don't think they can wait till they get home to talk to their needy wives or overbearing mothers. There will be a monthly cleanup of all bodies and burned out automobiles so that the landscape doesn't begin to resemble the world of Mad Max. These cleanups will be accomplished by using cheap prison labor and high school students averaging below B-. And as King, I will also insist on being issued a personal jamming device 
just for those obnoxious bastards who talk too loudly and get way too personal on their cell phones in public. And again, I don't believe that I'm being unreasonable. I'm sure my grandfather wrote a similar note in his lying spiral notebook with a number two pencil ranting about those goddamn automobiles scaring all the horses. They could have used an insightful king then, too. King then, too.